Well, good afternoon, everyone. Cynthia Tomain here with Interactive Brokers, and thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm very pleased to have with us Tim Moore of Market Geometry, who will be delivering today's uh, uh, content. But before we actually move over to Tim, I'd also like to welcome Barbara Schmidt Bailey with the CME Group. Barbara's going to give us a quick overview of uh, the products that are available that Tim's going to be talking about today. So, Barbara, I see you've unmuted your phone. I've just given you the ball, so take it away. Thanks, Cynthia. We're just roaring and ready to go here in Chicago. Very excited to be with everyone around the globe. Thank you for joining us. CME Group is pleased to be co-sponsoring this event with Interactive Brokers and extend a warm welcome to you for today's presentation, using physics to help keep you on the right side of the trend with Tim Morge. CME Group and Interactive Brokers have been working with Tim for many years now to bring you professional educational webinars on futures and futures options and trading and all the markets um, that are offered. And we encourage you to look into IB's web webinar archives for past events uh, from 2012, 2011, 2013, probably even older than that, <laughs> as well as register to attend further monthly events. As a trader and investor, you look for opportunity in the markets and a way to capture that opportunity. Futures are an extremely flexible tool for expressing your market opinion and capturing trading opportunity. The CME Group Futures and Futures Options Markets trade electronically almost 24 hours a day providing traders an opportunity to trade market volatility any time of the day from anywhere in the world. CME Group represents a family of individual exchanges, including the CBOT, CME, NYMEX, COMEX, and KCBT exchanges, with contracts covering all major asset classes, including FX, stock indexes, agricultural commodities, energy, metals, and interest rates. The CME Group is regulated by the U.S. CFTC, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. As Tim discusses Newton's three laws of motions with us today, he'll be using examples from CME Group's suite of FX futures, uh, namely, uh, I believe, the Aussie dollar and Euro dollar markets. Um, you can find out about our FX products at cmegroup.com slash FX. And the snapshot that I have here of uh, uh, Q2 um, volume, average daily volume, and open interest in some of our most active FX contracts. Um, you can have a, there's a brief contract size, minimum tick size information, as well as um, information, like I say, on the, on the average daily volume and open interest, both for the futures and the futures options. If you're interested in this type of summary information, looking for our most liquid and uh, uh, heavily traded products, you can go to cmegroup.com slash leading products and you'll see that across all of our um, all of our asset class, classes and markets. Uh, the Interactive Brokers CME Group Futures Resource Center can be found at interactivebrokers.com slash CME. This is a great place to start your day each day with news, quotes, charts related to futures markets as well as the list of upcoming online webinars and um, uh, daily futures reports. Tim Morge has been a professional trader, author, educator, and mentor for more than 35 years. Besides trading his own capital, Tim is president of Blackstone Capital, a private money management firm that works with several of the largest non-U.S. institutional portfolios. Tim remains one of the world's largest currency traders, He's taught hundreds of professional floor traders at CBOT and CME to become successful off-floor electronic traders, and he's a regular lecturer at some of the most prestigious universities in the U.S., including MIT, Stanford, and the University of Chicago. He currently donates his time teaching basic technical analysis to fourth and fifth grade accelerated students in the U.S. through his crayon drawing program with his children, and he is a regular speaker for us here, of course, with Interactive Brokers. Tim's websites, medianline.com and marketgeometry.com, feature a great deal of free information regarding his trading methodology and are both are visited by thousands of traders from around the world on a regular basis. We're thrilled to have Tim back with us today, happy and healthy. Thanks for making time in your schedule for us, Tim. Thank you, Barbara. How are you? Um, one thing you didn't mention, I'm proud to say that I have been a CME member since 1980. 
and still have my jacket. Um, even though I live in Arizona, I'm not giving it up. I refuse. So always good to see uh, Barbara and Cynthia. We have been working together. Um, I guess it's, it's been so long it's not polite to talk about it any longer, so I'll just I'll just say it's been a long time. Um, we took Everybody took August off, but uh, they gave me a nice rest in July, and I appreciate it while I got my eyes fixed. I thank you all um, for just being patient and taking time out and come back uh, once I was able to see and put together a nice presentation for you. You guys can sound me okay? Sounds okay? Tony, you got problems with sound? Okay, just checking. Because um, I can't hear myself, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so um, as I said, um, it's always a pleasure to be here. These, these, these young ladies, I only give seminars with IB and the CME group. And there's a reason why they're the best educators and, and they present the best education in the market. And uh, there's no better place than I'd rather be. So let's uh, go through real quick. Uh, there's my ugly mug, using physics to stay on the right side of the trend. How many of you are uh, a little nervous about physics or math? My kids get straight A's and they tell me they hate math and they're nervous and all these other things. Okay, my, I had my daughter take care of the, my, my 13 year old take care of the, the uh, physics part, okay? So don't worry about it. Yeah, I teach it, but I'm not gonna be nasty, don't worry. So here we go. Shane lives, um, if you wanna know, lives in Las Vegas. Gotta remember how to do the slides, there we go. So um, Market Geometry, that's my website. Uh, lots of free information, don't go there, it's just to spend money, go there. Soak in the free information. There's all kinds of articles. There's links to all the CME and IB uh, webcasts, some COB web, CBOT webcasts to go back with Barbara to 2003. So there's all kinds of things. So lots of free stuff. Please explore them before you even consider spending it. I don't care if you ever spend any money. Just go and have a good time. Um, everybody has to have a risk disclaimer. You know, we're basically covered underneath Cynthia, Cynthia at IB. Their, their compliance department has gone through everything with a fine tooth comb and taken care of anything. A couple things I would point out. If you are looking for the Holy Grail, you're in the wrong place. I don't have it. It doesn't exist. The closest thing there is is educate yourself, hard work. Don't believe in anything that anybody says, including me, until you verify it for yourself, verify that it works for yourself. Don't over leverage yourself. Understand what you're doing. Take your time. Make sure you know what you're doing, okay? Past performance does not guarantee future results for anybody. The markets change, people change. If you're trying to trade when you had eye surgery, of course, you're not very bright. It was nice of Barbara and Cynthia to know that I would not give a good presentation if I couldn't see. Remember, this is one person's experience, me. Your experience may differ. The things you learn here today, if you like them, don't just hold them close and say, okay, I got the, I've got the golden goose. No, go investigate them and see if they work for you. You might look at it and say, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like this or it doesn't work for me. You might say, hey, this, you know, a lot of people Earlier in, the, earlier in the year, in the spring, we had quite a few people that went away going, hey, the light came on for me. Ah, the laser pointer, thank you. See, so you go away for a couple of days, and thank you, Cynthia. Um, the light went on for quite a few people on, on our, some of our earlier physics analogies. Remember, these are just analogies. Do I still wear glasses? Um, yeah, I'm wearing uh, cheaters just right now for my computers, and that's all. All right, so now, Let's, let's just jump in. But before I do, I want to say all the thanks to all of you. The seminar is dedicated to the people that come and take these lectures. That's you guys. You're trying to improve your skills. I appreciate it. I'm honored that you would take time out of your busy schedule to come hear my thoughts. Because I know how busy you guys are. I know how hard you're working. I know how hard this is. All right. The only reason I do this is because people did it when I was young and learning. And without Amos Hostetter, without Dr. Ellen Andrews, a couple other wonderful people, I would not be where I am. So I'm giving back. I'm paying forward. And hopefully when you guys make it, 
you'll find a way to help other people make it as well. And I'm sure a lot of you, if not all of you, will find your way. So this is a presentation in the style that I use when I lecture at MIT and Stanford. So please be patient while the material unfolds. At the university, this might have been a three or four hour lecture. We're not gonna go three or four hours. Um, and some of it will be condensed. That's okay. Remember, you can go through these materials and review them over and over and over at the IB website. It is recorded, you also get the slides. So if it doesn't hit you right in the face, don't worry about it. Just relax, go over it again. Please keep your comments related to this material and my methodology. You got, got somebody else that's your favorite, that's fine. Enjoy this. Let everybody else enjoy this. Maybe you'll find something you like, maybe you won't. Most of you here are here to view this seminar and this material. Please respect what they're here for. And please hold your questions until the presentation is over. Otherwise, we'll be here until Cynthia says, hey, I gotta go to lunch, my stomach is growling. Because this is a, unfortunately a long one. Um, I did half of it before eye surgery and half afterwards. And piecing the two together, I could only cut so much. So here we go. I, like I said, I had my 13-year-old. I told her exactly what I wanted to teach you in physics today. So are you ready to learn some physics? And I let Lucy decide how to teach you the principle that we're going to use today. Here we go. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. Take a good look. And that is the end of the math and physics, other than the applications. Lucy says that's all you need, okay? So if you were worried, if you wondered if you'd get it, I think this is pretty easy to digest. I've used this with my fifth graders, works good. Okay. There you go, don't go against the trend, you got it, okay. Now that we've defined the basic physics of a trend, let's try to find practical applications. The reason we're doing this, hey Matt, how are you? Uh, Doug said, don't go against the trend, got it. Well, here's the interesting thing. Trends that go on for something like January all the way through, let's say August, the majority of traders that day trade, they get it for the first six weeks, eight weeks. Then they try and pick the counter trend trades over and over and over. It got to one point where, in the Aussie where for every email that my partner and I got asking about getting short the Aussie in the downtrend, we got 50 asking about their current entry trying to pick the bottoms. People get bored. Trading is difficult. Boring happens. But the worst thing you can do is fight a trend. If you get bored, take a walk. Go shopping. Uh, go to the shooting range. Whatever you do that works for you. Go work out. But, you know, if something's in a clear trend, you get, you get scared? There's nothing to be scared about. We'll look at some entries, Chris, and then tell me if this helped, okay? We're gonna go through quite a few. No reason to get scared. All right, let's look. So let's do some practical applications. Now I'm gonna tell you, this first one, trends end abruptly, yeah, sometimes. But see, the thing about it is, Chris, hopefully by then you've made so much money that you're only gonna risk one stop. That one stop, maybe you've rolled 18, 19 forward, that one stop, no big deal. What if you tried to pick the bottom 18 times in a row? No, 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 no. We're not talking about getting in on a trend in January and riding it all the way to September. It's not what we're talking about, Chris. We're talking about intraday trading. At the most, holding something 18, 24 hours, something like that. Okay? This is not trend trading. We do, we do trend trade, but that's not what we're talking about today. So, I, this first 
don't let this first one get you. It's a little bit, this is the hairiest of the whole group. And there's no way, unfortunately, for me uh, to make it anything less, but I'll try and walk you through it. Then they get, they get a, lot, not, a lot clearer. Maybe it was my vision. So here's an application of physics, 60-minute Aussie against the U.S. dollar. CME, easy breezy. And by, by the way, if you wondered whether or not, if you don't trade the Aussie on the CME, if you wondered whether or not the CME, hang on, Stu, if you wondered whether or not the CME has enough liquidity in the Aussie, $13 billion a day goes through the Aussie futures, the CME group. There's more than enough liquidity for anybody, and basically it's 01 bid, 02 offer, so there's no slippage. And you can see the bids and the offers. It's all good. Okay, so unless you're trading thousands of contracts, you really don't have to worry about it. It's just fine. Come on in, the water's fine. This does apply to all day time, time frames. We're going to look at 60s, but I trade 20s, 60s. My partner trades 120s and uh, 480s. I sometimes trade 240s, but I like 20s, 60s, 240s. Then the rest is portfolio trading. So here's our first slide. Let's take a look. You can see price crawl up. And this is a median line called a modified shift median line, which means the A point has been moved up halfway and over halfway. And you can see it's got nice frequency in the center here. Price gets up to the top. That's where price needs to make a decision. It should run out of energy in this area. And what happens? Price leaves a relatively flat top then finally starts to break below prior lows. I expect any rally will likely leave lower highs. Pay attention to that. Why? Well, we came up. We broke out of our range. We had higher lows, broke out of our range, made a run to the top. But we really didn't get much pop for our run. Consolidated. Now we're taking out the downside. As we take out the downside, I expect now that price, as it rallies, will leave with lower highs. And as I draw, that becomes clearer and clearer to me. And so as I'm now looking for the price action, I'm thinking about lower highs. You can't see the laser pointer. Uh, anybody else see it? I can see it. Here? Yes? Can't help you if you can't see it. That's, sorry. I'd love to. I'm not a tech guy. So here we go. See if you can pick it out. Here's our flat tops. Here we are breaking lows. These new lows will should lead to lower highs. So let's see what happens. Price comes down, leaves the shelf. Here's our test of this straight multi-pivot line, kind of a trend line. We come down, leave one low, rally back, make a lower low, which leads me to believe we should have a lower high. What do we do? We leave actually, I don't know if you want to call it double tops, triple tops, a series of tops, but we can't break it. And now we start to leave lower highs. As we come down and take out the first small swings, I get short. This is a median line here. This is the upper parallel. Here's the lower parallel. Here's the center line right here. If you measure the distance from the center line to the upper parallel, use the same distance. That's called the first warning line. Andrew says 80% of the time price will either run out of energy or accelerate. I expect price to run out of energy. I put in a sell order. Now my stop has to be not here. Everybody's going to have stops here. We call this a dumbo line, okay? And when we teach fifth graders, this is the top of a valley. You have to be above structure above this. So my stop actually has to be above this high, which is the high for the move. So it has to be above 106. Remember, Save, try and save your questions for the end because otherwise we're never going to get to where we're trying to go. So I get short. 
My important part here is, A, by breaking new lows, failing to make new highs, I expect this rally to be lower, and then I, when that happens, then I'm looking to sell any subsequent rally if I can afford the stop. My stop also has to be above the prior high. This doesn't count. Cheap stops will just get you stopped out. So here we are. This is what I'm thinking. I'm going to get short here, stop here. It's actually a 35 tick risk. And my initial target is down at the lower parallel, this lower red line. And I have to lean forward with my bad glasses. So I'm risking 35 pips to make 142. I assume most of you would do that on any on any normal day. And the other thing to see is that unless I get stopped out, I'm going to move my profit target along the sloping line. So the longer I'm in this trade, the more I'm going to make. See that? So it's pretty sim simple stuff. So let's see what happens. Price just just tumbles, period. If you don't know it, and I'll tell I'll, I'll talk about it later on in the in the presentation. When you trade with the trend, you have it about a ten percent edge. So good things happen if you're in a strong trend and you trade with the trend and you have your stop in the right place. Now, the stop is tied into average true range plus noise. Again, I'll answer questions at the end. My profit targets are going to vary. You're going to see five or six, just relax, you'll see bunches of different trades in this one Aussie trend, which is the idea. So get out at the lower, lower parallel, profit target met, I'm out. Thank you. Done. So we netted 100 and, and something, it looks like 184 to risk 35. I, I, I wish I could see better, I just can't. You guys can probably see it better than me. An object in motion tends to stay in motion, period. Don't fight it. Don't stand in front of a truck that's coming down the road at 60 miles an hour. It's not going to be fun. So. This is us taking profit before. Now we're watching price. Here price comes up. This is that same median line. This is that same warning line. Nothing's changed. Price comes up and you can see it respects, I mean it goes by a little bit, but it respects this upper parallel, then sells off nicely. You can see the wave come down I put out what's called a multi-pivot line. It's just a straight line out from this spike high. Price come down, make a new low. So again, what do I expect? I expect that the next high is going to be below this prior major high. I'm expecting a lower high. So where do I want to trade? I want to trade at the edges. I don't want to trade in here. I don't want to trade over here. I want to trade out here at the edges when things get stretched. So price, you can see it move up. You can even see some gaps, so the Sunday night gaps. Price gets stretched. Finally, it moves up. And where am I able to get short? This is one of my favorites. I've got a multi-pivot line or slight, you know, been tested many times against a sloping line. It's one of my very favorites if I can afford this stop. It's almost identical to the prior trade. It just has, as I said, that first trade has a lot of lines crossing here and there. If you review it leisurely, it's a, it'll be a lot easier for you. This is 60 minutes. We're just going to stay in 60 minutes for this entire presentation just so we don't get confused. Okay? So let's take a look. As I said, my favorite, at the moment at least, I mean, we're a lot entries are the least of my worries, especially in a trend. But one I like a lot is when I have these multi pivot lines, the price slides right over into these down sloping lines because I know I have the down sloping lines and ninety nine point nine nine percent of the market they don't have this area. Price gets here, I want to sell a retest of this first warning line. Where's my stop? If not above here, 
It's not above this spike. It's got to be above this structure over here. This is where whales or large traders like me are going to have major sells. I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry about Hagopian. Look, it's Hagopian means that we've made an excursion below this line and haven't touched here. But don't forget, we also had the overshoot here. You put the two together, it's just the slop of this whole median line set. And remember, this median line is long. Um, January 6th, we're using it in February. We're using it a month later on a 60-minute chart. So I don't expect precision. Okay? Yeah, questions at the end, please. Unfortunately, I'm not able to uh, govern myself when I try and answer questions. So do, do me a favor and try and keep them at the end. Thank you. So this is where I want to get short, at the edge. Now, this is really important. When you see what you're looking for, act decisively. Okay? Don't scratch your head. Don't chew on your fingernails. Don't doodle on a pad of paper. If you know what you like and the light comes on, it's time to act. You've got the stop to protect you. That's what stops is for. Never trade without a stop. Always use a stop that you can afford. If you can't afford a stop, you just don't trade. Put your order in. Put your stop in. You never want to do this. And I have students that one of the very first things I have to correct with a student. I want to get short here, but let me watch the market, and then I'll go to the market. Okay? That's not a good idea. Just put a resting limit sell order where you want to get short and put in your stop at the same time. After you're filled, then you can put your profit order in. Now, what do I want to do? I want to sell here at the warning line and also at this multi-pivot line. I've got my stop above this structure, and once again, I'm just going to simply buy at this lower parallel. Same trade I did over here. I'm just going to recreate the whole thing. We I call it making donuts. I'm just going to do the same thing over and over and over until it doesn't work. Let's see what happens. I get filled at the warning line. Now, look, if I had not had my order in the market, if I had been sitting here chewing my fingernails, if I had been doodling on a pad, if I had decided to wait, and then I'll, I'll go to the market when I see what I want to see, by the time you saw price get up here, price would have been down here, and you would have been trying to figure out what to do, and you'd be trying to chase the market. So put your limit sell order in, put your stop in, and let the market take care of you. If you don't get filled, you don't get filled, that's okay. Don't ever chase the market. I get filled. We have a nice wide range bar lower. You gotta love trends. Now we can put in our profit order. And as Barbara would say, easy breezy. Now if you want, you can trail stops behind here. And then it goes vertical. Here we are. i got to lean in again. Again, we're risking 35 pips, and we make 157. We take our money, walk away. We're just harvesting money. We're ripping money out of this market. It's in a beautiful trend. There's no need. You know, if you want to hang on and trade it, you know, for seven months and leave it open, sure, fine, go ahead. But you can do this day after day after day after day after day if you want, if you are diligent and wait patiently for the setups. Do you know what to look for in the downtrend now? You've seen was it two or three opportunities. Starting to get a feel? Yes, if you're having problems, just pop up, pop back in. Sometimes that will help you. Nobody's get only Petra's the only person that's getting a feel for what's going on. Okay. Hi, David. How are you? Okay. Let's look again. Same set of red lines. I haven't changed anything. Our last profit was right over here. 
Jay says privately, how about you get stopped out every long trade? Yeah, how about if you were trying to take the other side of this trade all the way down? It would be a very long couple of months, wouldn't it? But we, like I said, at one point, Shane and I, my partner and I, were getting 50 to 1 emails from people that were trying to locate the right place to get long because they'd, uh, it's gone down so much it must be near the end. Very dangerous in the trend. You're much better off to just be patient and stick with the trend. So what am I thinking? Price is now done the exact same thing. Here's the back to the warning line. I just literally, when it leaves the spike, I just put out a horizontal line. And you can see price comes up and tests it and tests it. I don't see what I want yet. Why? Because it doesn't look like it's at the edge yet. I haven't seen anybody get hurt. I haven't seen any sell-off. I need to see some motion away from this area before I'm willing, because it looks like it might have some strength. So show me some sellers. I, I'm in no hurry. I just took my profit over here. I don't have to get short here. I don't have to get short here. I don't have to get short here. I don't even have to get short here. Show me some sellers. Show me something that I want to see. So what do I want to see? I watch price. It comes down and shows me some sellers. It works its way back up nicely. It looks like it got ahead of steam, doesn't it? Then I watch, and I see three nice same lows, triple bottoms. The pivot A is way, Jack, is way back January 6th. We'll actually show you at one point I'm going to go to a, for one chart, one chart only, I'm going to go to a 480 minute and show you the entire trend, and you'll see where A is, okay? But... And we can always go back at the end when you ask questions, and I'll show you the original median line set. But we're still trading off the same median. Okay, I mean, keep beating it till it's dead. So watch. We get triple bottoms. We break below them. What do I want to see? Am I ready to trade yet? Uh, I'm not so sure. A would be P0. That's right. So what I'd really like to see, maybe a nice pullback with a decent stop to sell. I certainly don't want to trade here. So this is I'm, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, maybe a nice pullback and a stop above here. I don't know. But, of course, you get what the market gives you. So you can want this. You can think about it. It's always a good thing to think about it. You might even draw it on your chart and say, hey, you know what? It would be nice if I saw this. This, this would light my, you know, turn the lights on for me. That's fine. Put it on your chart. And then watch the price. When you see what you want, put your orders in. Don't go to the market. That's impulse trading. See what we get. I'm looking at it, and like Jack and Pat, I go, you know, A is a long ways away. I mean, at this point, it's a month and a half, maybe more, since I drew this median line. Maybe I'll draw a new one. I don't really have to, but maybe I'll draw a new one and maybe it'll make me feel better. Or maybe I erased this red one and I want to draw a new one. So, Jack, Pat, you want to know where A is? How about this? This is my last touch or last major high. I'm going to use this as A and marked it as ML1. We made an excursion lower. You can see we gapped lower, came down, filled the gap. So I'm going to mark that as ML2. We come higher, touch our outer warning line if we left it on there. If we don't, it don't, doesn't matter. What do we do? Spike high, triple bottoms, broke the triple bottoms. So for now, I'm going to use that as C, A, B, C. Now I've got a new purple downsloping median line. So for those of you that are wondering where A was and, oh, my God, how, how can I trade on something that old? Okay, here's a fresh one right in front of you. Let's see how that works. Okay, I watch price. I gotta move my chair and I have to tell you. Vision vision world here, folks. Remember, when I look at this massive formation, you can see people trying to get price to move above and look at the closes. None of the closes are up at their highs. I have every reason to believe these major sellers are still working sell orders in this area. The whales are sitting right here. And until they're busted, 
I'm going to believe they're there. When they're busted, if I'm wrong, it'll cost me one stop. But that's all right because, look, I've, I've – let's see, what did I do? The first one, 187, so 26 stop, that's nine. The second one we did is 150, let's call it, seven and a half. So that's 16 and a half stops. Most of this is going to cost me is one stop. So, Carrie, I don't have to worry about that. One stop, it's okay. Let's take a look. Price comes up on my new median line, tests it, but closes near its high, so I wait. Breaks above it. Well, I'm not ready to sell now. It's breaking above it. It's right at the warning line if I haven't taken out the warning line off my chart. But look what price does next. Makes a new high, closes near its low with great separation, which means number of pips from the close up to our upper parallel or the warning line, either one. And that tells me that the sellers are right here, and one of them or two of them or five of them want, okay, that's enough, and started to sell by this close. We call that the door opening. Everybody runs through. What do they see? They see nothing but sellers. They run down the hallway. This is a great sign that the sellers these sellers right here are still around. So the light comes on for me, I'm willing to trade. What happens? Real simple. I get short at the retest, and it's vertical. I mean, I get short. I make sure my stop's in. I put in my profit target, and there is no place to put in any stop behind structure. It just runs straight down. Where do I take profits? This time I just, it's running so fast vertically, I'm thinking about either prior lows, which is this multi-pivot line, or the lower parallel. And before I can think much about it, it just fills me at prior lows. Risk reward, 136 pips. I risk 25 this time instead of 35, 5.4 to 1. All we're looking for is 3 to 1 or better. We always want to trade with a risk reward of three to one or better. Are you starting to get a feel for looking for a location when price moves to the edge on a pullback? We call it a pendulum pullback right here at the edges. Find a place where you can afford to stop. Find a place where you can identify the sellers. You can afford to stop, put your orders in, let the market take care of you, then put your profit target in, at least three to one, take your money, get out of the way, do it again. And again, and again, and again. Now, in hindsight, this is me taking profit. In hindsight, there were probably two great areas to get short again, but price left two strong prior lows right here at the same area. So really, it didn't work for me. It probably would have worked as a trade, although the risk reward maybe was a little skinny. But I couldn't even get my mind around it because this looked too strong and this wasn't enough of a rally to feel like it was on the edge. So I just walked away. If it doesn't feel right, don't trade. If it doesn't look right to you, something doesn't feel right, walk away. It's always another trade. Okay. Are you ready to get tweaked? No math. No physics. We're done with the hard part. I just want you to think now. I'm going to rearrange your mind, okay? Press the digitation? I don't know. Here we go. Let's look at four examples from the euro against the U.S. dollar. So here's our first example. Price is coming down, leaves the low, the support holds, now what do we get? Nice series of higher lows. 
Can everybody see it? See them stack up? See the organized buying? Take a look. This is particip participation time, folks. Now I want feedback. And you can see now we're getting higher highs and higher lows. Looks good, right? This is a 60-minute euro, yes. Stair-stepping up, absolutely. So here we go. Let's see what happens. That was a show of strength. Will the support hold? Sandra says should move up. What do you guys think? It's okay. Don't be shy. There's no right or wrong. What do you think? Don't own yet? It's fine. Okay. Ready? Let's take a look. We're only going to draw whatever I have. I can't, uh, you know. Okay. So here we go. What happens? We get higher highs, higher lows, higher closes. Price does come down, but leaves a higher low. Then it lands higher after leaving double bottoms. So we're going to mark that as support held, right? Let's look at the next one. Second example. Lower close. We leave a spike low, but look at the close here. Price runs higher. Pulls back. Leaves lower lows. Excuse me, higher lows. And look at this wide range bar engulfing the prior bar, closing in its upper half. Higher closes, nice closes separation. Okay, what do you think? Will spur hold? Got a higher? What else? Not sure, that's fine. No? Yes, yes. Up. I want you to think. Doesn't feel right? Okay, good. Can't tell? That's fine. You don't have to say it privately. Don't be, don't be ashamed. I just want people to look at the charts, think about it, get involved. That's all. Okay. Let's see what happens. Show of strength. Will support hold? Here's what happened. Here's our Wide range bar with a higher close. And what do we get? A series of higher lows and higher highs. Looks pretty good, huh? That one worked, huh? What well, would you count that as? No, oh, let's just take take it for what it is. Let's not worry about this. Let's not worry about the context. Just take it for what it is. Sport held. Price moved up nicely, right? Let's do two more. Third example. This is, by the way, this is how I teach at MIT and Stanford University of Chicago. And I teach physics, I teach finance. Finance by, by finance, I mean money management, risk reward. And I actually teach in their trade labs. Third example. Support holds. What do we get? All these nice higher highs and higher lows. We last bar we break the high, close in the upper half. What do you think? Nobody thinks it's gonna oh I do get somebody think it's gonna fail. Okay. Not happy with it. Okay. Let's see what we get. Okay, I want you to have an opinion. I want you to look at them. I want you to think about it. Now, let's see what we get. Show of strength. Is support going to hold? Well, we know time will tell, Bob. But you can you can say I don't know. But you know, don't don't give me time will tell. If you know what price is going to do tomorrow, call me now, will you please? Okay. 
Let's see what happens. Here's where we left it on this bar. We got a series of higher highs, higher lows, and we closed on our high. So I'd mark this one as a through this bar, support held, higher lows, moved higher. What do you think? You agree? Okay. Now, uh, there's something interesting. Let me black that one up for just one second. Somebody said an object in motion. Okay. Interesting. Keep that in the back of your mind. Everybody keep that in the back of your mind, okay? This is, we're going to talk about trend trading. We are talking about trend trading. Okay? Keep that in the back of your mind. An object in motion, though. Fourth example. Higher lows, higher highs, wide range bar closes in its upper third, broke above the multi pivot line. What do you think? Nobody thinks it's going to fail. Oh, there, I got it down. Okay. All right. In theory, theory and practice are the same in practice, they are not. <laughs> okay. I have a lot of philosophers here today. Not enough data. Svetlana, how are you? That's fine. I have no problem with that. I'm just trying to get you to look at it and think. Okay? There's no right, right answer, no wrong answer here. I just want you to pay attention to the charts and get involved because we're going somewhere after this. Okay? Show us strength. We'll support hold. Here's what happened. Wide range power higher. Multi pivot line, what did we do? We came back, we're testing, testing, testing the multi pivot line. Can I, so far at least cannot break below it. Last close is near its high. What do you want to give this one? Made it? Consolidation? What do you want to call it? Is anybody willing to call this price went lower? Lunchtime, that's a great, I like that one. Transition, okay, consolidation, I'm fine with that. But I don't think anybody can actually say I went lower, right? Okay. So we saw four examples. Okay, hang on. We don't need a higher time frame. We saw four examples. Now, granted, there's only, let's take a look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's 19 total bars in each, uh, in basically in each example, okay? You've got little snippets, right? Now, volume is meaningless. We don't care about volume. Okay, so now. Here's what we're going to do. You ready for an interesting exercise? I'm ready to tweak you now. You ready? When I take these four pieces and paste them together, remember what you just saw. And remember what Gina said, an object in motion. What do you think we just saw? Johnny says, I've got lots of people saying trend, okay? Little motion. Matt, Matt says a downtrend. That's interesting. Counter trend, trade with the trend always, support, now resistance, accumulation. Okay. Are you, re are you ready for me to paste them all together? Somebody says that this is the end and it's topping. Possible start of a down move. All right. Everybody got their opinions? You were born ready? Okay, Sandra. Cool. You must be the, what is that guy, the Dosexi, Dosexi's man or whatever. Anyway, let's paste them all together and see what we were looking at. There's nothing magic. I didn't leave anything out. We're just going to paste them, paste them, paste them, paste them together. Ready? Here we go. Get ready to be tweaked. Yeah, I like this. Phil says, don't want an opinion, let price talk. Here we go. 
Now let's see the four examples as they unfolded, one right after the other. Here are your four examples. Take a look. Every bit of price was a twitch of the worm. Every run up was a twitch. Am I okay there with sound, uh, Cynthia? I'm getting an odd beep. I think we're hearing it. Um, it's probably somebody trying to contact you. So keep moving on. Um, it's just a momentary. Um, oh. I hate it when people call me. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're on a headset, be prepared to move back over to the speaker. It could be your headset running out of battery. But keep okay. going. I'll let you know uh, if we can't hear you. Okay, darling. Every time we got strength, every time it looked like price was holding, this was a twitch of the worm. Now, this is why people, well, Patricia, listen, I, I, really didn't, I, I really did not fake you out, honest. Again, you can go back and review this, and if you paste them together, you'll actually see they fit together nicely. Here's the deal. This is why people have so much trouble trading with the trend over and over and over because it's very difficult to see the sell-off and then see the strength and then say, okay, oh, now I'm ready to sell. Because you're so caught up in these bars as it works its way higher. Then we pull down. Then we work our way higher and you get caught up in the moment with these bars And it's very hard to stick with the trends. Still 60 minutes, yeah. And it sells off. And it pulls back. And we've got another twitch. So instead of worrying about, oh my God, I gotta get long because this thing is moving up, you need to keep in mind what's the trend. Okay, when this pulls back, this is the pendulum pullback. This is the area, take a look. This is the area that I should be thinking about selling and a pullback. And now it comes back up strong and instead of getting all excited because it's moving to the upside, I want to trade at the edges. Look, it's pulling back. This is where I want to trade. And price comes off. And as it comes back up, this is the extreme. This is the area I want to trade. I don't want to get short down here. Okay, if I miss this entry, that's okay. There'll be another one of these eventually, and I can get short there if I want to. But I don't want to trade short down here. I don't want to get short down here on a breakout. I don't want to get short on weakness in the sense that I'm selling on the whole, right? These are drawn off of major pivots. For anybody that thinks I'm pulling rabbits out of my head, go back and take a look at this at your leisure. You get the slides as well. You'll be able to tell when you get the slides. It's very simple. So when we look at all four examples in order, we can see that each area of strength was just a twitching worm. While there may be minor buying opportunities in strong downtrends, sure, you, you might have found a way to buy and get out here, but you have a 10% edge in the downtrend if you're getting short. Are you saying you do not trade breakouts? Ed, I have never trade breakouts. Breakouts, I, no offense to anybody that thinks they can trade breakouts. Breakout traders have the lowest percentage of being long-lived in the markets. Good luck with that. Um, it doesn't have to be inside the pitchfork. I mean, you saw me, for example, use a warning line later on. You need to find market structure. Look at these series of lows that are the same. Prior, you're going to lean. You need stops that are on market structure. But often, yeah, you can find a, a median line that'll just take care of the business for you. So we'll look at some more examples, Thomas. I'm not done. That was just a euro. I wanted to have you step back. Horizontal lines. I just 
These are just areas where you might consider being short on the pullback. Short on the pullback. Short on the pullback, okay? No more turtle trading. Um, it's a very volatile lifestyle. How about that? Um, I, uh, quite, a, quite a few of the turtles uh, that made it are, are, you know, are lifelong friends of mine. Richard Dennis is one of my closest friends in Chicago. Um, recently, unfortunately, we lost Le Cheval. Um, turtle trading doesn't work as well as it used to. That is absolutely the truth. Uh, why? Again, we'll answer more questions at the end. But day trading, this is a knock them dead technique. All right, back to practical applications, please. All right, so now that I've tweaked you, let's go back to practical. Let me get a drink of tea here one second. Okay, now we're going to go just right back to Aussie. 60-minute Aussie again, okay? Nothing up my sleeves, no more tricks. Simple setups, trades, relax. Let's take it apart again. Ready? So did you see how we are looking at strength to sell in a downtrend? Everybody get that? We needed a stop, so we needed structure to the left. But every time we got that stretch up, that wasn't a change in direction. That was just the market coming out to an extreme. So even though the market does come in extremes, it still actually is an object in motion. And at the moment, the object in motion is on its, excuse me, this is on its way lower. It just has oscillations or fluctuations. And we can take advantage of those, okay? So let's see if we can apply that now. Now that we've taken a look at it and scratched our head and say, how can that be? And put it back together and went, oh, okay. Expand and restore energy, sure. Okay, so let's jump ahead. We're gonna pass the whole month. We did a three or four shorts. We're gonna pass a whole month because we don't wanna be here all day. Here we go. So this, in essence, to me, is the battle for the trend in this market. If you think this market was trending before, we're about to find out what this market is made of. Here we are in March and coming right into April. And you can see price has rallied all the way back. We were down around 102-ish. We've rallied all the way back up to 105. The high high was 106. So the question is, are there sellers here? Are there sellers at 106? Is this downtrend over? Look, look we made nice higher lows. We had a nice pullback, and now we're headed higher. What are we going to find when we get up here? So do you understand the picture, everybody? Before I go on, take a good look. Take your time. So me, I'm not ready to trade. I'm looking at it like you should be looking at it, saying, what exactly am I going to find? Because as price makes this last bar, this little spike, personally, I'm in the, hey, hold on a second there mode. You know, show me what you got. I want to see, I might want to get long. Why not the excursion line to the high? I don't know. So I'm not ready to trade. Somebody said to me earlier, somebody wrote, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not ready. Okay, I'm not ready either. I'm not sure. Thomas says no short. Okay, we'll see. I don't know. The light has not come on for me. I know what I'm thinking. Major buyers here, and I want to know if sellers show up. I don't know anything more than that. Does anybody else have? That's what I know. Seems like there's some major buyers here. I'm looking for sellers. I want to know if the sellers are here. I don't know anything else. Some days that's what I get. I look at the chart, and I say, okay, price, yeah, closing the valley, maybe. If lower high, the new median line, okay. So I say, hey, price, what do you got for me? Because right now I'm not feeling it. I don't see it. The light's not on. 
I, so when that happens, I don't force a trade. I just wait. There will always be another trade. Just wait until the light comes on for you. We call that opportunity. We're not looking for trades. We're looking for opportunities. Okay, so price does come up, and what does it do? Double tops. Are there sellers here? I'm still not so sure. I'll mark this as median line one. I'm just marking a pivot because I need alternating pivots to work with. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm just going to mark this as median line one. With me? Just a just a marker on a chart. Nothing else. I drew in the double tops. Now I notice the price comes down and leaves the lower high. Oh, I this pink line has no real slope. It's just. I just put this here to remind me that this spike high is lower than this high. That's all. And then now we had a shelf and we've broken through it. It's just it's just a simple reminder. Not nothing more than that. Okay? I'm just I'm drawing notes to myself. None of these are precision. These are just, hey Tim, we just broke through a shelf. Hey Tim, we just left the lower high. Because you know, if I lose focus or I get a phone call or I talk to my wife, I come back and I look, it's a lot easier if I draw notes to myself. So I actually draw notes to myself. I do lots of funny things. All right, what happens? Price breaks the shelf. Tries to break above the shelf, can't. Breaks below what I had as this lower parallel has run lower now, and where are we at? We stopped right at the prior major lows. Now, there were major buyers here before, and we're closing right at the prior major low. It's money time, isn't it? Now, I don't have a stop here. All I have is a straight trend line. Um, why didn't I trade on the parallel? Didn't work for me. Didn't feel right. I don't mind missing a trade. Your trading will improve greatly if hang, – hang on, David. Your, your trading will improve greatly when, when you are watching, looking at a chart, and you say, you know, this thing is moving, but I don't get it or it doesn't feel right with me. Just don't trade. Didn't feel right for me, so I didn't do it. David says, where would your stop go if you went long? There is no stop. That's why I did not go long, David. There's nothing over there. Let me go back one slide. There's no stop over here. It's just we're testing the same bottom, and that's called filling a mountain. That's the same structure, so that's no stop for me. That's a fifth grader rule. But you have to have a stop, a bit of structure underneath, and there's nothing there. It's a flat line. So I'm not interested yet. So I want to see what price is going to do. Let's just watch, see what price is going to do. Yeah, I would wait. I'm going to wait more. I'm not ready to trade. I don't have an opinion. I don't have an upper or a lower. I'm just watching. If you've already identified the likely pivots, ML1, 2, where does ML3 have to form? Let me see if I put 1 and 2 in here for you. Here we go. Here's, let's say if this is 1. If price holds here, would you be willing to make this ML2? That's an if. If it holds on this retest, are you willing to mark this as the second pivot? Okay. So let's let's say, let's answer the question then. Sandra says no. Okay. If we've already identified the likely pivots ML1 and ML2, where does ML3 have to form? This is just a question about. I want you to think about what you actually know about a median line. This has nothing to do about a trade. So take a moment, clear your mind, stop, 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 stop typing, listen. You listen? What do you know about median lines? 
Okay, so once I've identified ML1 and ML2, do I know anything about the next potential median line? Does anybody know anything about it? What do I know? I don't know if it's not an equal distance. I don't know any of that stuff. The reason I asked the question, oh, okay, I'm getting some interesting, well, it's an alternating pivot, absolutely. ML3 will be an alternating pivot. Ouija's got something interesting. Magnet for price, well, I'm looking for descriptions. Let's take a look. Let's do it, let's do it visually, okay? If this is ML2, so here's one, here's two, if I leave a lower high, yes, you're correct. ML, it has ML3 has to be higher than ML3, otherwise, of course, this wouldn't be ML2. Okay, so now, well, now here's an interesting one. Phil says ML3 will be below ML1. Will it? Does it have to be? No, it doesn't have to be. Sure, ML3 could be above ML1. Is there anything I actually know? I'm not, not for sure. I'm not putting any conditions on this. I'm just talking about a median line. Is there anything I actually can intuit about these median lines as I draw them? Here, you want me to draw another one? No, we're not doing coulda, woulda, shoulda. This is theory. This is not going to break down, blah, 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 blah. ML3 must be higher than ML2. Yes, we know that. Okay, watch. How about this? Here's the same ML1, same ML2. Now, ML3 is the same as ML1. Do you notice anything? Down sloping. I know it's a down sloping median line. Well, somebody says ML3 same distance from ML3 to 2. Well, wait, hang on. I'll draw another one for you. Ready? Who says ML3 has to be below ML2? What about that one? Aren't, the, aren't all three of those possible? And aren't they all down slopers? You're going to have to go a long ways up before this even becomes horizontal. Okay? And M can work it. We don't, no, we don't care about warning lines. This, we're just thinking about what we know about meeting lines. So, so what do we know? We know that 3 has to be higher than 2, and we know that it's going to be pretty hard for this to be anything other than a down sloping meeting line this set of alternating pivots, no matter where three end, ML3 ends up, whether it ends up here, 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 or all the way up in here, it's going to be a downsloper. Okay? That's the exercise. Don't get past that. That is the exercise. That's all I want you to understand, because most people don't understand, is that because two is below one? Yes, it's simple geometry or alternating pivots. It also has to do with this distance. But in most cases, these median lines, you can immediately, you know, and if you have Ensign, for example, you can just, in an e-signal, you can pull it out, do one, two, and then stretch it out and play around with it and look and say, no, no matter what I do, this thing is downsloping. Alternating pivots, a high, a low, and a high. That's the explanation, Stephen. That's it. That's it. That, that's all we wanted to do with this, okay? I just want to make sure that there are a lot of people that have misconceptions about median lines, okay? They're very simple, but... Don't go into them with preconceptions that you've 
gotten from forums or bad information sheets on charting packages. You know, let's learn them right while we're learning. All right, let's take a look now. So we're back to the same chart. Remember this chart? No, this does not tell us anything about the trend. This tells us that if we use this as an alternating high, this is a low, and we're using the next one, that that next median line will be downsloping. It does not mean that, the, that, that we're in a downtrend yet. That median line would then have to assert itself. It would have to show us that it, the probable path of price was correctly reflected in that median line. And by the way, if price broke through that median line to the upside, that doesn't mean drawing that median line was a waste of time. It actually gives us information, okay? All right, so slow down again with the questions. So we get done here. Then we'll go to then we'll go to questions. Now, one more time. Here we are. ML1, ML2. We have double tops there. Are the lows going to hold? That's our. What are the probabilities? Isn't that our question? Isn't that the question in front of us right now? What are the probabilities right now? Is this going to hold? Are the buyers going to show up? If they don't, well, we'll be drawing again, won't we? If they do, what will we be looking for? You cannot work out the probabilities. You do have to wait and watch. That's correct. If this area holds, we'll be looking for what? Come on. I know I know you have it in you. It will be enough thing, well, what are we going to be looking for? Well, we know price, if this holds, price will go up by definition, but what? You're thinking too much. Simple. Come on. Simple. Simple. It's much simpler. Come on. We want to know where the sellers are. Are there sellers? Are there no sellers? Is there not one person in the world that wants to sell this thing? If there are sellers, where are they? Okay. I've already chosen not to get long here because there's no stop. So now the only question I have is if I'm unwilling to get long and it holds, okay, are there sellers somewhere that will give me an opportunity? I'm looking for an opportunity. No, I don't use cash stops ever. Period. Don't twiddle in the middle. Very good, Sandra. I like that. All right, so let's see what we get. So what happens? Price holds, and we get a vertical move. Everybody quickly got the idea that the boy, the big boys, the whales, people like me, you went long there? Congratulations, Thomas. Tomas, sorry. Um, that the boys were there. This was all Tomas. Good job. Price went higher. And now where are we? We took out these double tops. And look at our clothes on this bar. Nice sign of strength, right? So now we come up. We're back inside of this blue upsloping median line. We make it all the way to the median line. We leave double tops, and then we pull back to what was resistance, right to it. Do you see it? So here's your question. Do you want to buy the pullback for new highs? What are you thinking about? Let's just think about the probabilities. What do you want to do? You want to watch some more? Buy a retest? 
You know, if you're going to buy a retest, where's your stop? If you're going to buy, what's your profit target? All of these things are what you need to think about. Flow swap, so wait for pullback to go long. Okay. Watch to see what it does to the lower median line. That's fine. Those are all ideas. Have your ideas. Have your probabilities. 80% chance price goes to the median line. Okay. I like that. That's Dr. Andrews' rule. Let's see what we get. Price went to the median line. There you go, Paul. So price goes vertical. If you wanted to buy the retest, it was Tomaz. Good. Wonderful. Now you're at the median line. Truth. New highs. Indisputable. Correct? This is a fact. Yep. Just the facts, Jack. Now, this is the high high at 106. Right here. In J I, I believe on January 6th. Well, don't be doing the happy dance, Tomas. We didn't get long down here. Well, yeah, you did. The rest of us were stuck in this area. Sorry about that. Sorry, Tomas, you are doing the happy dance. Okay, so as we come up in here, we're at the median line, and we've got one bar closed over the median line. And as was pointed out, 80% of the time, price will make it to the median line. It does. So Bill Reed says now it's going to the upper parallel. Okay. That's certainly one of the possibilities. I've got one, two. I'm still asking another question. I know John's saying blue to blue, which means from down here all the way to up here, which is somewhere up in here. Right? I'm still asking this question. Where is ML3? Where are the sellers? Well, we don't have ML3 yet, but we need to, you know, we don't know where it is. Maybe it's at the upper parallel. Maybe it's at prior highs. I didn't get long down here. I didn't have a stop I liked. I didn't like this area. It's not a, not a terrible thing. I, I just don't know what the target would be. Didn't take the trade. To me, this is what's framed out. Well, I'll tell you what's in my mind now. If 103.5 continues to hold and we take out this high, the downtrend is over and we're likely to have a big run to the upside and there'll be plenty of opportunities to get long. But first, let me deal with this area. So I'm still in the back of my mind wondering, is there going to be an ML3 up here somewhere? Let's see. Here's what happens. And I zoomed in for you. Truth, new highs. Remember me writing that? This is the battle for the trend in this market. Price sold off from 106 to 101, and then it made it all the way back nearly to 106. We're at 105, I don't know, 80 or something like that. Yeah, 80, 85, something like that. We make a spike high close in the middle of the range. What are the probabilities? We're at the upper parallel. Sorry, we're at the median line. And what happens? Price leaves a look, pulls back to the median line, leaves a lower high. Now it breaks below the median line, tests the median line several times, can't get above it, starts to sell off. Can you all see that? Now, I'm marking it this way. I've got buyers at 103.5. And I've got major highs and probably interested sellers right at 106, and I'm at 105.85. I'm thinking this question Is this the bait? This run up right in front of 106? Is this ML3? I don't have anything to mark, so I'm looking at the market. I'm looking for frequency. We're not going to be able to go into this too much. It would take too, time, too much time to describe, but take a look and see what I do. This just simple connect the dots. This is what the fifth graders do. And you can see the frequency. And if I flip it over, you can see the frequency. And if I highlight it, I just grab two lows, same frequency, 
a darker line so you can see it. I don't know anything about flags. I get them confused. Flags, pendants, and all that stuff. But, so it's like the shampoo thing. I don't, I don't get that. It confuses me, Sandra. It's too difficult. So <clears throat> I'm just being honest. I, I really don't, Sandra. I'm, I'm not being anything other than honest. I have this frequency. It's been tested on the upside. It's been tested on the downside. It looks like it fits this market very well. Don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. But I can see that price is leaving lower highs and lower lows and is failing to get back above the median line. So let's see what happens. Because in the back of my mind, I still have this. Is this the bait? Remember the bait from the euro? No? I go back and do them again if you want. <laughs> All right. I don't want to torture you. So price is approaching the prior highs when it's cut off at 106. We've reached the nexus point. Nexus point means action jackson. Something's going to happen. If price continues higher, making new highs and leaving higher lows, we are clearly in an uptrend and we're going to have to buy the dips, period. Don't have an opinion. Let price tell you. If price fails to make a new high and leaves lower highs and lower lows, the downtrend has reasserted itself. Sell the rallies. That's the plan. Make sense? Okay. So here's what we get. Price leaves the low, and you can say it's breaking these nice lows. It's broken through the frequency. Now as it comes up, I expect a lower high. So when I come up, Take a look. This is a spike high right here. See it? But look at it. I close in the lower third. So I take this same frequency, and I just copy it over here. Okay, yeah, great separation on this bar. And I know somebody say, well, what about a median line, right? Anybody want to ask the question before I... Ask it myself. And you can see price now breaks below prior lows. We had near double double bottoms, now we've broken below. Higher prices are rejected. Yeah. What about thank you, John. What about a median line? I need a straight man. Thank you, John. So price has failed to make a new high and is now breaking below prior lows. Okay. I'm gonna outline a trade, but some of the proprietary methods involved would take much longer than we have in the seminar to explain. You can go to marketgeometry.com or medialine.com and pick this stuff up in articles. It, I, and I'm, it's not that I'm trying to hide anything. It's just that we've already gone an hour and change and haven't answered questions. I only include the trade because to preserve the integrity of this presentation, this move is the key to determining whether price is now in a true downtrend and not still within that 106 to 103 and a half trade, 103 and a half range. So I had to include this fight or I'd be leaving out something very important. So let's take a look. So here's our downsloping median line. There you go, John. And what do I notice? After failing to make new highs, price seems to be eroding faster than the red downsloping upper median line parallel. In other words, I can't imagine at this point, it doesn't seem to me that price is going to get up this upper parallel for me to get an opportunity to sell. This is clearly the art portion of finding and using action reaction lines. Note how I meticulously defined the frequency here and here and then checked it here, then I carried it over here. I defined the frequency I saw in this price action. It seems more like I would be able to use my action reaction lines for an entry. So I extend them down right here and I'll sell any test of this magenta upper reaction line as long as I can afford to stop and as long as the risk reward makes sense. And remember, I got this right in front of me. This is vertical, so it's not like I have major bottoms to worry about in here, but I got 103 and a half to worry about, right? This is the fight for the heart of this market. That's why I included this portion. So 
We zoom in. I've extended this out. You can see how I found the frequency, tested it, put it on the top. It even works on the top. Look at the four touches on the top. Price makes breaks through the shelf, makes new lows, comes back. I get short at the frequency. Now look, I could put my stop above this poke higher, but it's not really a swing. This is not structure. A whale is not going to move his orders down here. Where are the whale orders? They're going to be up here at ML3, at least until this gets taken out. Frequency is slope. Yes, absolutely, Martin. Good. Normally, I'd be looking for this upper parallel, but you can see it's eroding faster. All right, now, I can't put my stop here. This isn't a swing. I don't use cash stops. My stop has to be above structure, so it's all the way up here. 105.89. I'm insured 105.38. Now, again, this is 60 minutes. If you look at an average true range of 60-minute euro, you'll see we're well within average true range plus noise. Stops above and below major swings. Absolutely, Tomas, yes. Save you lots of headaches and lots of getting stopped out. All right, so I'm short. You can see why I, I, I could put a stop here, but that's going cheap. Cheap stops just get you stopped out. You want to be behind, hiding behind other orders, and those orders are going to be right here. So here we are. I'm short at 105.38. My stop is at 105.89. My logical profit target is 103.11, which is lower parallel. I'm risking 51 ticks to make 227 ticks, a risk reward of 4.45 to 1. It's a very nice risk reward. It's not the greatest risk reward in the world, but it's a very nice risk reward. Again, I don't take anything below 3, but 4, 5, uh, you can do a 103.50, sure, why not? That's fine too. And you know what? Your risk reward will still be 4. Absolutely. Hiding behind the big whales, yeah. Now, Sandra, I don't know if you know, I'm one of the whales, but, you know, if I was trying to enter this market and I wasn't using this ticket, I'd be trying to enter here, and then, of course, when it took out this low, then I'd be searching for the next level. I don't care. I'm not trading off of this median line. It's okay with me, George, because my stop's going to be above this structure. We've broken lows now. This now becomes a swing high. With me, George? New lows confirm a swing high. So I can put my stop up here. Okay. Again, if you want to be at prior lows, very safe. And your risk reward is still great. I have no problem with that at all. The other thing you can do is, as it moves down, protect yourself with profit stops. Unless it goes vertical like this, in which case you're not going to have any worries. So let's see how it unfolds. We get filled. Now you can see as we break through this low and leave this high, if you're worried, go to break even. You can see we come down to the median line, test it, bounce around it, then head lower. If you're worried, once we break out nicely below, put your stop 50 pips above here. Now you've locked in profit. Now we zoom through the median line and head lower. At that point, this is the last stop you really can use. You can take your profit here. Nothing wrong with that. I ended up taking my profit at 102.89. It's only, I don't know, 60 pips more. It's not, it's not going to make or break the trade. Either trade would have been great. This is the safer of the two profit targets. This profit target relies on the mathematics of Dr. Andrews' work, which is when we go through the median line, 80% of the time it'll go to the lower parallel. But here's the thing. If you take the bait on the wrong side of the market and you're trying to buy up here all the time, you're out of step with the dance. Think of what would have happened. These are 60 minutes. Think of what would have happened if the euro if you tried to buy all that strength. 
those four times. You would have been busted. It would have been a long week, 10 days. You got to stay. This is the Aussie now, yes. Tamaj, you're all over it, I know. All right, so I was short at 105.38. My stop loss was 89. My logical profit target was 102.89 because I moved it down the slope line. I risked 51 ticks. I ended up making 249. It gave me a final risk reward of almost 5 to 1. Were you not scared of the energy points at the free? I'm not scared of anything anymore, Doc. I have profit. I have stops in. I don't. What energy point? Uh, the frequency line. No. Yeah, I don't care about that. At this point, I'm already, at, you know, I'm at break even, and maybe I'm slight profit stop. If if it's, you know, it didn't actually work its way over there. It was falling too fast. He's he's talking about where these lines of opposing force met. But you can see, price was moving so fast, we never had to. It never came in. Wasn't in the picture. But that's what stops are for. Work profit stops behind. As you get profits in here, you know, you don't want to sit with 350 points on the table and not have a profit stop. So work the two together. All right. Once again, ready? We're going back to work. Are you ready? Sandra's hungry. So price works its way lower. Here we are getting short. Here we are taking our profit. Y'all see where we are, y'all? We need to observe and orient. Have you oriented yourself? You understand where we are now? Okay. Price comes out of the hole. So the first question is, was this run below 103 and a half? Was that just a wash and a rinse and maybe we're turning around higher now? Have the buyers gained control now? Or is it bait? Gina, what did we learn? Body in motion stays in motion. This is just a pullback. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for the bait. I leave the worm in for you. I'm not sure yet. Now, this is a long, skinny meeting line. Here's our A all the way up at ML3. Here's our B at the lower we took profits. Now, we could have taken the high, high, or we can also take the width. It doesn't matter. This is called a width median line. This is this is my invention. Don't probably name Dr. Andrews. What I like is I like to take the entire consolidation of this run up before it starts to make lows, and then put the C pivot, bury the C pivot right here. That's a width median line. Okay. And I wonder is this. If this is ML3, this would be ML4, is this ML5, okay? I'm thinking this is the bait. Well, Gina, you know, even if you missed one of the shorts, there were lots. This was the gift they kept on giving. Now, because this was vertical, I just took this median line and did a modified shift. See the difference? down 50%, over 50%, because it's vertical. And especially in the currencies, it's generally, we get a violent move, then we get a more gentle move, okay? What is that snake? That's a worm, that's the bait. Bob, you forgot the Euro example? Do I have to come back and do it again, Bob? Oh, how do I know the bait's done? No, it's a question. I guess it should be a worm with a question mark. I haven't traded yet, Andre, so I don't know if it's done. We have to out. Price will tell us, right? <laughs> Thought the pinks were a flashback. 
Okay. Price flirts with our 103 and a half line, comes back up. I take a look. Remember, now I've got at this point something like 22 stops rolled forward. If I, if I lose a stop, it's okay. That's see, that's the that is the key to trading is if you can put stops in your account, then you can trade a lot more freely. You don't have a lot of pressure. You just relax and say, this looks like a pullback to me. I've got my nice modified shift median line. It comes back up. I want to get short. I'm going to leave my order to get short anywhere after the fourth bar. I want to get short at the upper parallel with a stop above this pullback. So I want to get short at 103.77, stop at 104.04, which is seven ticks or pips above this high, depending if you're trading cash or CME Aussie, which I'm trading. Profit target, I'm going to go for the median line. I always place limit orders, period. Limit orders with a stop behind it. Put them in at the same time before you get filled. Never trade without the pair in place. If you want, and your platform will do it, and I know IBs will, you can bracket the whole thing. You can say, you know, uh, profit target would be about 102.90. Want to get short at 103.77. Stop at 104.04. Put the whole shot in at once if you want. Me, I like to get filled before I put my profit target in, but that's me. I think it's safer. Just in case you get an unexpected drop and you didn't get short. But at least always put the stop in at the same time, please. Okay, so I'm short at 103.77. Excuse me. I'm looking for the median line. 80% of the time, Andrew says, price will make it to the median line. I mean, no time. It takes almost no time. Risk 27 ticks to make 102 ticks. Risk reward is 3.8 to 1 with my bad eyes. I take my money. I'm out of the market. Okay? Remember, when you're out of the market, the boogeyman can't get you. Nothing to be scared of. Take your money off the table. You can step back. You clean your head. You can erase your lines, draw new lines, do whatever you want. Money's in your pocket. And in a, in a trend, there's lots of opportunities to get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out. Okay? So we got our money. Let's see what price does. Grabbing the twitching worm on another counter trend rally or looking for the pullback of the next entry. What are you going to do? Here's the worm we were looking at before. Here we are. We got our price right at the median line. That's called Andrews 101. When it hits the median line, it turns. Hit the median line, turned on a dime. Now you can see it pulling back, leaves double tops, and then busts through them. That's strength. You want to buy the strength? No, I think it's another twitching worm. I'm going to keep beating this example until it beats me. Just stick with it, okay? So what am I willing to do? I'm looking for something along probably, and this is the warning line. So here's our median line, upper parallel, and then the next one out is the warning line. So you decide what you want to do, whether you want to get short, or what are we going to do? We're going to get short. And look, look at what's going on. Now, here it is, 480-minute chart, just so you can see the whole thing. It's a line chart from here's the high, January 6th. And this is the modified shift, but this is the A. I can't remember who was asking, but the A is right here, right after the first of the year. If you pull up a 60-minute chart or even a 480, you'll see it. You can't miss it. That's the A. That's the B, that's the C. Then I use the modified shift for this example, but you could use the traditional one that gave us all the trades that we liked before. But take a look. Twitch, 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 every twitch. Look at them work. Do you really want to get out of step with the trend? Now, these are just some of the twitches I found and sold in this downtrend. From January to mid-August, I have nothing to say about the FOMC, sorry. 
from January to mid-August, which is pretty much when I stopped trading because I had to have eye surgery, um, I found 15 profitable shorts, and I only took one long position that was in March. The long position gave me a nice 300 pips, but that was it. The rest of them, all short. The key for me was when we took out 103.5 right here. That's when the fun really began because then it was just sell, 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 sell. What was your alpha versus just staying with the trend one trade? Oh, I made multiple times if you just got short. Uh, 15 trades, an average of about 150, let's say 150 pips per trade. Somebody do the math for me. Twenty two hundred versus one oh six to at this point eighty eight. So there you go. Where did the eighteen to twenty four hour trading go? Uh don't know what you mean. This is just a example to show you and it's a squeeze in chart. This is a four eighty, four hundred and eighty minutes. So you can see what the trend looked like. And I don't go back and look at different time frames. I stay on one time frame, but just so you guys got an idea of what the trend ended up looking like, this is what it looked like, okay? At the beginning you said you'd be doing that. This is the A right here. This is the B, this is the C, this is the modified shift of that A, B, C. What percentage of your account are you risking in each trade? Um, I actually trade unleveraged, Chris. Um, the maximum I ever risk is 1.6. I trade for myself and for sovereign wealth funds. I'm one of the largest sovereign wealth fund traders in the world. So I'm, I trade very unleveraged. I don't need to trade leverage. These types of moves, and gold is another perfect example, there's no need for me to use leverage. Not, not necessary. Uh, yeah, that is it. Okay, so there are there be whales in these waters. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, before Barbara, excuse me, before Cynthia jumps in here, wait, just wait a second, Cynthia. She's about to do, ask you to do a poll. Don't forget, hang on, we'll answer questions in a minute. Don't forget when you answer the poll, there's a section in there where you can type in something. You can, gonna, we'll answer all those questions. Just hang on and pay attention. I got I got I got to thank you. I see. I'll tell Lucy and Sean you said hi. Um, I appreciate you coming, my brother. When you fill out the form in the center, there's an area where you can type. Make sure you type in Cynthia's name or type in more webinars. Don't You don't have to punch me. But something, because that gives her more happy with her, with her boss. Let's her do more of these. Not just with me. There's, there's plenty of other good presenters, okay? Is it possible? Let's, see, let's answer questions in a minute. Let Cynthia do her thing. You there, Cynthia? Okay, well, thank you for that lead up. Yes, I was waiting for you to take a breath there for a moment, Tim. But okay. as Tim mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and pull up that poll. Now, there are just three short questions, and number two is that input field. The others are multiple choice. So I ask that you make your selections here, and then notice there is a submit button in the lower right hand corner. The poll is only open for about 45 seconds, um, so please make your selections and then simply click that submit button. So thanks everyone. This is something that uh, IB management requires for each of these events and that's what's allowed me to bring Tim back on a regular basis because these polls have always been excellent. So thanks everyone. Um, you do have about 10 seconds left to complete the poll so if everyone would click that submit button I'll be able to compile those results. Poll's about to end. Thanks all for your participation there. All right, now, it uh, poll has ended, and I realize it's covering up the chat panel. So find the X that's located in the polling panel over on the right-hand side and close that. You can also double-click on the title bar for the chat panel. You should see an orange arrow there as well, and that will expand the chat panel so that you can send any of your questions so Tim can actually address them right now. So uh, poll has been in. Thank you very much, everyone. And back to you, Tim. Hey, um, Cynthia, before yes. we go any further, can we make the next session, I'm going to see my 95-year-old mother. She's having um, 
surgery on her leg. She has a clot in her leg tomorrow. So I'm going to see my mother the first week of October. So can we make the net, which is not very far from now. So instead of doing the first Thursday of October, can we make it the first Thursday of November? That would be fine. Uh, we were then, doing second Thursdays. Do you oh, I'm want sorry, second Thursdays. That's right. Second Thursday. Yeah, I'm okay. Sorry. I'm, I got lost. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's let's, all right. Let's, let's make we it want the second Thursday, and uh, I'm willing to commit to 2014 if you are. Ah, well, uh, I was talking to Barbara earlier this week, so you know <laughs> your ears must have been twitching <laughs> listening okay. to us talk about you. So I'll be in touch with you this week or actually next week to uh, see what we can work out for 2014. Okay, what, what, whatever you can do, I'll do. Okay, that sounds right. fine. Should whatever we, we you can do, uh, we'll do. Let's get to those questions, everyone. Oh, okay. and before Here's, you do, Tim, um, yeah. I see a lot of questions come in. What about the slides and what about the recording? Yeah. And I just want to remind everyone, we are recording this, and uh, it will take me about an hour to compile and upload it to our servers, but just as soon as it becomes available, you will get a direct link in your inbox. So be watching for that later on this afternoon. Now, if you do want a copy of the slides, when you exit the event, um, it will pop up, or this whole presentation will pop up pop up in PDF format, so you can print from there or simply download and save that PDF. It also will be available on our website, underneath on the Interactive Broker website, underneath the Education menu, there's a Webinars section. And if you go into the Recorded Sessions, it actually will be listed under the Industry Sponsored tab. And as Tim mentioned before, we've got a wealth of information out there. You'll find some filtering criteria up on top, and if you want to focus on those that Tim has done over the last several years, simply find his name in that drop-down list, and then all of uh, his events will display on screen for you. You. So they're there and available uh, so you can attend or watch and replay whenever it's convenient for you. All right, now back to questions, Tim. Okay, sweetie. Um, let's see. Uh, a couple I want to do real quick. I promised that I was going to come back and do homework, and I don't remember what happened, but we ended up not doing that more. Ed, just so you know, when we did that webcast, I actually, because of regulations, I actually can't show you trades that are open. In fact, somebody actually asked the question. I couldn't answer it during the um, – oh, thank you. I appreciate the thoughts from my mom. Um, I couldn't actually answer it during the webcast, but when I showed you that setup, I had taken my profit. I got short at 1180 – or long at 1186, and I was out at 1289. We ran up to about 1330. Um, I got long beans again at a lower level in early August – and left orders at 14.08, uh, which was a test of the prior highs over to the left, and got taken out about four or five bucks from the top. And now they're, I don't know, 30, 40 cents lower and just kind of doing nothing. So, and those are Novi beans, if anybody wants to check. No, November 12, 20, sorry, November 2013 beans. Um, let's see what else. Somebody said, is it possible to learn to trade at my level? Well, as I said, and by the way, yes, it will be the second Thursday of November, but you'll, you'll get a mailing from Cynthia and I, but that, that's what I'm thinking, but we'll see what Cynthia and Barbara say. Anyway, um, I, I, I mentioned earlier that um, – let me take a breath here – that Liz Cheval passed away. And Liz, I can remember looking out my trading room in the early 80s, and a good friend, Richard Dennis, put an ad in three newspapers that said he was looking for people that wanted to learn how to trade. More than a 1,000 people showed up. They interviewed on only one day. And Liz was one of the people. She knew nothing about trading whatsoever. And she made the cut down to 18 people. Those were called the turtles. And later they were cut down to about 10. She made that cut. Liz went from knowing nothing to managing, you know, two, three, four billion dollars at one point. Liz recently passed away, uh, and I'd, I'd known Liz since, I don't know, 1985, 1986. So she, you have to think about it this way, she went from a dead beginning, a zero beginning, to being a very large, very profitable trader, very well-known hedge fund trader. Um, 
and we'll all miss her and her and her fuzzy pink bunny slippers. Um, yes, it's of course it's possible that you can trade at at, at levels. Part of it depends on talent. Uh, traders are made, not born. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, some of it's talent, but a lot of it is hard work, okay? And it's really important that you spend time educating yourself and remember that this is – so many people come to the market and think that they can spend six or eight weeks, and then they're going to make money. It doesn't work that way. Um, Liz spent two years before Richard – capitalized her and then another couple years before he cut her loose it's almost four years okay it takes time I'm not telling you can't do it quicker but it takes a lot longer you think trading is really hard okay can you do it yes the hardest thing I'm gonna tell you all of you the hardest thing is mastering yourself can you find your weaknesses and either correct them or stay away from them, can you play to your strengths? All right, so let's see if we can um, – I cannot comment on gold, and I think you should know what that means. Um, let's see. Yes, my maximum risk is 1.6% of capital. That is correct, although I'm almost never at that level. I will say this. Um, no, I can't. Well, I can't talk about the trade. Never mind. Um, there are there are times where I where I am more heavily rate, weighted, but that is extremely rare. On a regular basis, I'm 1.6 or less. Um, you use the red reverse median line. Can you please elaborate on that. Um, I'll, I'll try. It's going to be easier for you to go back. No, well, it's not that one. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, here we go. Reverse median lines. Um, I'm not telling you to go out to buy the book. Stop, please. This is, I don't really believe in that kind of stuff. You, you should be able to get all this stuff from the median line website or market geometry web, website and or what we do here. Go back and look at the prior uh, broadcast. Reverse median line sets. We can pick a B and a C. Instead of starting with the A, we pick a B and a C, and then we move A up and down, and we take a look at the quality of the center line and or the parallels, and that's what chooses the slope rather than anchoring the A. Okay, so I chose this B, this C, I chose this high. I like the way price cut on the center line, and you can see if I actually had an A, it would be right here, but it doesn't exist, okay? That's a reverse median line, okay? Now, you have to be careful. This is curve fit. You need it to be tested before you go play with it. Uh, I didn't. If, why did I chose this? Why, why did I choose this? I, I must have drawn in this median line with this A, this B, this C, and it didn't fit. I didn't like the way it worked. Do you 24-hour trade around a core position? At times. Sometimes I intraday trade. Sometimes I'll have positions. Uh, Barbara and I once, when, I, when Barbara was only at the board of trade, Barbara and I did uh, really a, a fun one. We did five trades, and we monitored them, monitored them at the board of trade live as well. Every time I moved stops or profits, and we also did them at Traders Expo. And um, she's one of the cross currency trades that we were doing to mimic. Uh, oil, Canada yen, I think lasted 23 months. So just depends on what I'm trading. Um, let's see. Do I trade soft? Sure. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't have, not, I don't have an opinion on anything that I'm willing to comment on, um, but I trade everything. Sure. Um, I, I trade Mexican bonds, anything. I point and figure charts by hand and only portfolio trade. Can I try to add median lines as a tool for pullback spots? Sure. Um, one of the largest traders in the world that I know, at least person that trades his own money, has been trading since 1972. He started out with a dollar twenty-seven, and a lifelong, well, lifelong since 1980. A very, very close friend. Um, 
he's a portfolio he's a, sorry he's a point and figure trader and uh, when I started doing seminars and I had been kind of an adversary trader um, with him at the mercantile exchange when I started doing seminars he took my seminar and now since 1983 or sorry 90 yeah, sorry 2003 Barbara and I did oh my god I can't tell you I think 3,500 people went through the seminars at the Merck and the Board of Trade um, and he was in the first one and then we set up his office with median lines on his point and figure charts and that's what he trades off of do I always use 60 minute charts no not really do I consider fundamentals I have a PhD in economics as well as a PhD in math and physics and I almost never consider fundamentals because there's no longer any edge in them everybody has a dad at the same time so um, how do you approach a big, new, a big new event like yesterday's FOMC where markets go wild? Um, generally, if if I don't have a position going into something like the FOMC, I just wait until afterwards, wait for the volatility to damp down, then I redraw again. If I have a position, I have my stops in. If I get stopped out, I get stopped out. I don't sweat it. I don't worry about it. It's only one stop. Um, what about the daily trend line break of the Aussie? How do you work with that upsloping ML? Um, I have to tell you the truth, Sandro. You may or may not believe me. As I said, my eyes are still healing. I saw my doctor Tuesday. Um, he gave me the okay to go. I was waiting for compliance at IB to give us the okay on the slides, and I was waiting for my doctor to tell me, yep, you're okay. I actually have not been charting yet. So um, I actually briefly saw an Aussie trade in yesterday's midday session of market geometry that my partner was drawing, but I have not charted uh, since the eye surgery. I'm just, sorry, just not doing it. Um, do you know if your friend prefers closed only point and figure charts? Uh, Ed, you're asking a question that I wouldn't comment on because it's his proprietary method, but I appreciate the question. I wouldn't give away your secrets either. Uh, thoughts on market profile, Rajesh? Um, I actually was the original funder for market profile in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, the problem was computers were not powerful enough and real-time, uh, thank you, John, and real-time data was not available um, in a quick enough fashion to make them powerful. So I like them. I like it. It's a great way to classify the market. I think there are better ways to trade. Nothing wrong with it. And in fact, I had a, a professional trader from the CME. And for six or seven months, I worked with him, and I finally said to him, why don't you put up your market profile charts, because I can tell that's what you're using. And he got beat red, and then he pulled up his market profile charts on CQG. And then we had a much better relationship for the next two years. And, again, we did the same thing. We put uh, median lines on market profile charts. Works very nicely, which is also value-oriented, I think, is somebody else's version, et cetera. Um, Opinion about uh, QE to infinity, a.k.a. no taper yesterday. Well, remember, we are changing Fed chairmans, right? Oh, I see. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And, I, you know, I'll give my mother a kiss for you. This, so I have some friends here that were in Dr. Andrews' um, inner circle along with me that co always come to all these events, and, and I appreciate it, and I, I certainly appreciate the support. Thank you. Love to you. I'm going to be down in Florida in January, and I will see you at Coral Gables. How about that? Okay, so um, uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, at least Larry bowed out. We'll see whether or not uh, Mr. Obama chooses winner. I don't know. Um, Marco, would you retype that? I don't know what you mean. Okay, so let's see. Uh, are all your charts 60-minute all-session charts or only these? These were all all-session. But remember, 60 minutes is not my favorite. My favorites are 20s and 240s unless I'm trading long-term portfolios. Is four-hour time frame better than two hours than one-hour time? I mean, it goes this way. Here's how, in my opinion, it goes this way. 20 minutes, then four hours. Four hours is morning in New York, afternoon in New York, morning in Tokyo, afternoon in Tokyo, morning in London, afternoon in Tokyo, morning in New York. That's 24, uh, 24 sorry, 240-minute or four-hour charts. So those are an all-session charts, yes. No, not a live webinar in Core Gables. The few remaining members of Dr. Andrews Inner Circle, um, I'm going to be down in Coral, Coral Gables. I'm going to stop in and give everybody a hug and a kiss and make sure everybody's doing okay. Well, point and figure work with one-minute charts. Sure. Do a pitchforks, you mean? 
They work with anything. Absolutely. <clears throat> so for day trades, you prefer 20 minutes. That's my normal. Yeah, that's where I, that's where I stop first. Absolutely. Or, and I, you know, I, I got to be careful with this because a lot of people don't have availability to this data. I like tick charts a lot, especially in, uh, you know, for example, soy meal or natural gas or gold. I really like tick charts. But, you know, you could do 10 minutes or whatever. It takes time out of the equation, exactly. Do 240-minute charts make sense for index futures, or is it better to use daily? Um, it's up to you. Half of this, whatever that, whatever that statement is. Six of this, half a dozen of the other, whatever it is. You get it. Chart it and see which one you like. Will you carry overnight positions based off a 20-minute chart? Here's my deal. When I take a position, if I say this is a day-only position, I close the trade by 4.30. I, I work in a place called the Bat Cave. My trading was actually buried inside a mountain in Arizona, just the way the guy built the house. And it's down a long hallway. It's the only thing back here. And uh, there's, no, there's no windows. It's very quiet. And uh, temperature is always the same. It's very good for computers. Yeah, but at 4.30, I walk out and the Bat Cave gets locked period, because I need to have a balanced life. <clears throat> uh, I haven't seen you talk much about width median line. Looks useful. Can you expand a bit? Yes. When you're looking at a swing up or a swing down, when you're looking for that C, not the B or the A, rather than mark the high or the low, a lot of times I'll, if price creeps along the bottom or the top, I'll wait until the creep finishes and then price starts to make its true move, and I'll mark that as the C, okay? How do I handle economic data releases and news? Um, I have on my sheet, well, I run a sheet over the weekend that tells me when things are going to be released, then I take a ruler, put it down, and I tear off the description so that I just know what the times are, and then I know if I'm hunting a trade, at, let's say there's something coming out at 7.30 Chicago time, okay? If it's 7.20 Chicago time, and I'm looking at a potential entry, and I go, hey, I got something coming out at 7.30. It's uh, 10 minutes. I probably won't have much profit in this. You know what? I think I'll go get some more tea, maybe say hi to the wife, and come back in about 20 minutes and see if the volatility is damped down, and then see if I find the same idea. Uh, when do I normally start trading? I start trading, ready, Rob? 3 o'clock in the morning my time. Now, nobody – actually, yeah, Arizona time, yes. Um, but in Chicago, I would start at 3 as well. Um, and then I teach something called Breakfast of the Master from 6 to about 8. <laughs> when do I sleep? I go to bed at 9. Yeah, I mean, then I get – yeah, then I'm able to get a little bit of London, yeah. Uh, why do I like retests? Because it tells me that there were sellers. Price comes up. It gets rejected. It has nice separation. Then when it comes back on the retest – I expect sellers to be there. Came from a lot of statistical research in 1999 through 2001 with a nice gentleman by the name of Gary Fritz, who used to be my partner in Blackburn Capital, but is now since out of the markets. Um, he's a consultant for HP. Uh, let's see what else. Um, some of the pullbacks in Aussie look a lot like the top near 106, and you had to get in with the steep frequency. Did that give you some kind of cue and feel for potential pullbacks. Um, Luigi, do you mean the current pullbacks now? What's the math profile you found for buying pullbacks versus breakouts? Breakouts are losers. How's that? That's all I need to say. Do I believe in cycles to help what you do? No. Thoughts on the S&P 500? Um, as soon as people stop telling me the top is in, then I'll start to actually think about getting short. How about that? Is the strongest point? I use no indicators. I don't believe in them. And I know every one that exists. It's part of my math degree. But, in fact, when I mentor people, like I said, I often say indicators lag. And that's right. I'll often say, look, why don't you just show me the 200-period moving average that you're using and you took off the chart because it's time to show me the chart. 
do I use this methodology also on stocks or only in the future? Sure, I use this methodology. In fact, I teach. Last year I was teaching, uh, oh, God, I can't even remember how many, 25,500 fifth graders, 39 schools. Um, yeah, absolutely. They work anywhere, anything, anything that fluctuates, as Dr. Andrews would say. Um, up, up, up. Is the strongest point for rejection in retest is the separation bar for you? Yeah, I want to see strong pullback after we test an area of frequency or prior highs or lows. Charles, you're perfectly one, uh, your stock trading has been measured great. We're doing something now called Evening with the Master, and we're doing a lot of stock trading in that. We got tons of people, well, not tons, there's only 25 people in the group, but lots of people in the group got long. We started talking about it in May, Facebook. Lots of people in the group got long, 21, 22, um, after the window of talking about it. I and my fund got long at 21.63. So I wasn't even trying to improve my stock trading either. Well, I'm, I'm glad it worked for you. Good. That's all the fifth graders that can trade is stocks. So, you know, for the last three years, absolutely do it. Were Dr. Andrews' frequency the same as W.D. Gans? No, they were like oil and water. They hated each other. It was a lifelong hate affair. Um, no. Uh, Dr. Andrews' first goal in life was to prove that the uh, nailed frequency is 45 degree and is one by one were hoo-ha, which he did. That's actually where median lines come from and because as you change the frequency or, excuse me, as you change the scale on a chart, the one by one doesn't work anymore, but median lines, the slope still work. That was his first call. Universal, universal unifying principle of physics is cycles. Hmm. Your beliefs may need to be reconsidered. Well, well, D, I would tell you I've been trading for 42 years. I'm one of the largest traders in the world. I think my results probably indicate I know what I'm talking about. But it's open to interpretation. If you think I don't know, that's okay. It's okay. That's what makes markets. Are you still thinking maybe of coming to speak at the SDA in London? Um, well, I, I need a, actually, I need a invitation. How about that? <laughs> give me an, give me an, give me an invitation. I'd be more than willing to do it. I bet the fifth graders do better than most because they don't have questions. Yeah, actually, my fifth graders last year averaged un, unleveraged, unannualized, 14.5% for four months of trading. That's their average. Out of the 10 top spots, we were eight out of the top 10. And we would have had nine, except I actually disqualified one of the young ladies. You can go back about three seminars and, and see that story. <clears throat> no questions and no emotional mental bag. I must have missed that. Do you know uh, Marty Schwartz? Sure. Uh, I don't have a comment about his style of trading. Are you in tune with cycles but you don't realize it? I know all about cycles. Uh, I'm inviting you here, Tim. Okay. Just send me an email. Um, I shall remind the organization. Okay. Oh, Belinda's a good friend. There you go. Um, if the regular ML set and modified shift both capture price, will you view the energy points off these lines meaningful? Have you come across such interest? Yes, although I'm, 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 I'm much less likely if they're both down sloping or both up sloping, I'm, I'm, I'm less likely to pay attention to the energy points. If they're opposing lines of force, then I will pay more attention. Why do you choose this way of trading? Because it makes money. I can trade any way I want. Um, I had two mentors early on. One was Amos Hostetter, the best long-term trader in certainly in the last 300 years. Um, and managed to get four years of apprenticeship underneath him um, before he died in a tragic car accident. I spent uh, 15 years learning from Dr. Andrews, and uh, they were just, you know, w wonderful times. And um, that, along with I just have a innate ability for surgical money management, put it all together, Amos, Amos's risk-reward, Dr. Andrews' frequencies, um, and my money management, it has been nothing but a wonderful ride. I don't use candlesticks because, A, um, they don't present well. 
um, for example, I present in black and white, and, and I chart now in black and white because then I don't have to switch back and forth and clean up charts. Remember, I keep every chart that I draw. I have terabytes of charts. So I do everything in black and with black, uh, just basic bars. They're easier to present and show. Bars just are easy for me. But, you know, if, if candle, listen, if candlesticks work for you, by all means, use them. That's fine with me. Ever use line bars? Sure. I don't, use, I, don't, I don't like them, but that's fine. I know Linda uses them. That's fine. It's okay. I'm very old school, yes. I still hand chart. I don't recommend you try it. But, yeah, I'm very old school. Um, Facebook looks like it was at a downtrend at the 21st or 22nd level. What made you think the body in motion was over? Thanks for the great time. I'm 65. Well, I'm 55. And I never had so much fun. Okay, well, how about this? Um, if you watch the webpage, marketgeometry.com, I'll tell you what. I will put up the charts that we gave everybody in Evening with the Master, and it will show you. We weren't looking at the time for longs or shorts. We were looking for, hey, this is an opportunity. And we didn't – we followed Facebook from the first day we did the IPO and charted it every, you know, all the time. And then when we got in the May – and we were doing evening with the bat with the master. Um, we started hunting that area. Okay, so I'll I'll, I'll do a uh, a post on market geometry and uh, maybe probably mail it out as well if you're on the mailing mailing list. And you can take a look at it and see what we were considering. And I'll also add what I did about seven weeks later when I entered uh, for myself and the funds. Um, Let's see. Don't try volume bars. You mean no, 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 no. I hand chart. I mean with a pencil and paper. Okay, it works really well for me, but I don't recommend you try it because it's a lot of time. Uh, my wife would love me to stop. It's about an hour and a half a day. Uh, would I comment on the importance of beliefs for trades? I think you need to be decisive, but I think you need to approach um, every time you get ready to start with a chart. You should start with a fresh mind, no opinions. And let price show you. It's going to talk to you if you listen. Best charting package. Okay, David, wait, let me get David before he goes. Um, oh, it's, it's recorded, David. When you leave, you're going to get a link. They're going to send you a link. Don't worry about it. And you're going to get the slides when you leave. David, don't worry about it. Don't be angry. We Go, enjoy. You're all good. Uh, Pat says, best charting package in your opinion? Ensign? Well, I use Ensign because... Whew, yeah, out in the CME video archive, we'll have it as well. Sure, absolutely. And if you missed the link there, you can come to Market Geometry. We also give you the link directly back to IB in the CME, okay? You, it's easy to find. Well, one of the three spots. Anyway, um, the majority of the people at Market Geometry use Ensign. So it's almost like speaking a common language. Since the majority of people use Ensign, I use Ensign. I can use any charting package in the world. I want everybody gives them to me free because they hope that I will chart with them. My favorite is NeoTicker, owned by a good friend of mine. He wrote for himself, and I love it. It's just very complicated. The learning curve is steep, but once you get, well, I'll tell you, once you learn it, you can do anything with it. Um, but straight charting, easy to learn, hard to be dense, and really inexpensive. Uh, Bob, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Sierra, uh, too vanilla for me, George, but if it works for you, I don't have a problem. If, you know, I, I need to do, remember, I'm charting for presentation, so I need to be able to mark out with arrows and do a lot of sliding parallels and stuff. Um, so I have specific needs that I want. Trade Station, I still, I've owned Trade Station since 1982. I still have Trade Station on my box. I still collect data. Nothing wrong with Trade Station. I uh, had them clean up the median lines a couple years ago. They got a few more bumps in their but Stan's working on it. Do you ever stop, uh, Do you ever enter stocks before the New York Open at 9:30? Um, yeah, I do. I don't. Here's one, something funny, Paul. I'll enter a stock, but stock indices, I don't enter until at least 45 minutes after the New York opening. I like the balancing to get out of the way. Then I'll start charting. So I don't even pay attention till after 45 minutes. Then I start charting. If I don't have a position, but stocks, yeah, I just have a, I just run open, because stocks I don't day trade. Stocks I just long-term portfolio trade. A simple chart print and pen is still enough. Sure, why not? 
this is a very simple this can be very simple straight line a few slope lines the fifth graders are not even allowed to use slope lines how about that crayon drawing we're, and we're we're going to do a course with parents and fifth graders and we're also going to do a charity book that goes along with it and they're not allowed to use slope line there's only allowed to use mountains and valleys and they have to learn about market stra market uh, structure and they have to learn about uh, money management, and that's it. It's that simple, and it works really well. Uh, which which U.S. time am I on? We're on Arizona time, which is its own time zone, which means half the year we're on Mountain Standard Time and half the year we're on Pacific. So it kind of goes back and forth. Fifth graders, define for the British, please. Uh, fifth graders are uh, one more year left of elementary school. Does that help? Yeah, there will be an announcement. Um, on market geometry. We have to get it all sorted out because um, we did something in conjunction with Apple last year, and as you know, a good friend Steve Jobs passed away, and uh, so their charity is no longer funding anything with the schools, and we're in the, we're in the process of sorting that all out. Because it takes a lot, of, a lot of money to do that many schools. And the states, of course, right now don't have the money. They just don't. I mean, I understand it. So. Cynthia, I think we're winding down here, darling, and I know you want to go to lunch. <laughs> well, we have been at this quite a while, and I think you could, we could keep you here all day asking questions. But I do want to uh, wrap this up for today. I want to thank everyone who stuck with us this long and remind you there is a recording that will be available uh, within the next hour or two. So watch your mailbox. For those of you who missed the start of the session, you can always go back and re-listen via the recording. Also, remember as you exit today's event that uh, the slides will be available in a pop-up window. They'll also be posted to the Interactive Broker website later on this afternoon. So we try and make all of that possible. But I have to thank Tim Mort for all of the time and the effort that you put into this, Tim. It has been fantastic. Thank you very much. I also want to thank the CME Group because it's their dedication to trading training traders that has made today's uh, event possible. So with that, we're going to conclude our presentation. And um, once again, uh, I've taken a look, Tim, and November 14th looks like we'll be together again. We don't have the topic just yet, but uh, do watch the Interactive Brokers website. Underneath the education menu, there's the webinars link. And as soon as we get uh, Tim's topic locked down, it will be available for you to register. By the way, registering uh, for any of our events, you'll also get the link to the recorded playback, whether you attend or not. So if you have interest in a topic, simply register, and we'll make sure you get the information. So with that, Thank you once again, Tim. It's wonderful to have you back on the program, and I'm so looking forward to November as well. Thank you, Cynthia. I always have a great time. I appreciate it. I'm honored when you guys ask me to come. Uh, Barbara is probably at lunch. She'll be my guest. Give, give, give her a hug for me when you see her, and um, we'll get together next week or later this week and figure out exactly what we want to do for November, whatever fits for you guys. Sounds perfect. Well, with that, then, I'm going to conclude today's event. You can all exit using the X in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and please trade smart. Thank you all. Take care, Cynthia. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Bye-bye.